Do you have a child who struggles with math? Maybe you don't enjoy teaching it. Maybe you're struggling to find those retention moments. Today I want to share with you one of the math curriculums that has really blessed our family and helped to redeem our math lesson time. Hello, my name is Heather. Welcome back to Wholehearted Homemaking where I share all things motherhood, homemaking, and homeschooling related. Today I want to tackle one of our favorite math resources. Now, if you're interested, I do have another video sharing one of the other math resources um, that we use in our home primarily. Um, today, I'm going to only be talking about elementary math and specifically in a Charlotte Mason education because I'm gonna be sharing all about Charlotte Mason elementary arithmetic series from Simply Charlotte Mason. Now, I am not getting any kickbacks from it. I'm not affiliated with them. I just really love their product. Um, and I'm gonna share about that today. A caveat, if you go back to that first video, you will see that I do share about Rod and Staff. My oldest was not able to use this particular curriculum because it is a newer one. And Rod and Staff worked really well with her. My third child started with Rod and Staff, struggled, we went to here, we had some relationship issues, so we went back to Rod and Staff, and I talk more about that there. But for the most part, we use Charlotte Mason Elementary Arithmetic for my children, and it has redeemed math time. My second born, my fourth born, and now rising my fifth born will be using this curriculum and they all thrive in it. Now you need to know your own student and you need to know your own teaching style to be able to really know what the best math curriculum is. So today I wanted to share a little bit more in depth about the Charlotte Mason Ele Elementary Arithmetic Series. It is a mouthful, so I'll probably call it CMEA, but I love this curriculum for a couple now, one of the things you need to know when approaching this particular series is that that Charlotte Mason part is kind of important because it focuses on using her methods in the classroom. Now, um, the first four books are written by Rochelle Baburn. B I'm sorry, Rochelle, I always say it wrong. Baburna, Baburna, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and Rochelle is an amazing homeschool mother who has written me is following Charlotte Mason's principles. However, I do encourage you to read through the Mason volumes and maybe just find the sections on mathematics and read those to help you better understand how we're going to do it because we are going to approach this different than a traditional style math. If you are not ready to read Charlotte Mason's um, original volumes or anything like that, Simply Charlotte Mason has amazing YouTube videos and blog posts that will walk you through those guiding principles. And I highly recommend it because the author of this book does a lot of them. But she also has a great overview at the beginning of each book to walk you through all the different steps. Now, one of the main concepts that I have taken away from this is this little motto of Rochelle's. And it's new review and mental math too. Those are the basic steps of doing this Charlotte Mason approach. There are a few other things that I will talk about, but we want to remember that we're introducing new concepts, reviewing old concepts, and always including a little bit of mental math. So what are the key components of this particular curriculum series? There are five books, first of all, and they do say book, not grade level. So um, none of my kids are usually in the right grade to match the number. And that's okay because they're just progressing through the book at their own pace. And that's one of the great things about this. Um, they also, I believe, have placement tests online that you can look at to find out where your child might fall. And Rochelle and the lovely people at Simply Charlotte Mason are really great um, customer service and will reach out, reach out to them and they'll help you. So you have book one, two, three, four, and then you have book five, which gets a little bit different. So there are all these beautiful colors and except for book four, they all have these lovely ribbon bookmarks. So I wanted to talk about that. Um, the other thing is that it has um, layout in it. So you have your overview of lessons. You also have um, kind of your, always have what's covered in the book at the beginning. And a lot of this you can view online. You have the overview of how to do it, pacing. And then they also include usually a nice little grid that will help you kind of pace yourself. If that's something that you need to do or would like to do, pretty much I ignore that <laughs> because I just go at my kid's pace, but it is very helpful for those who need it. And then it'll also have a supply page before you get through. And then each section that was listed in the table of contents has um, a little overview at the beginning of it. And throughout the text, you will have, um, this is not something you're gonna hand to your child. This is gonna be something you do with them. And I'll go through a little bit more of it here just right in a minute. So one of the other key components 
I have, let's see here, six main components to this particular curriculum and what we love about it. Number one is the short lessons. I don't know about you, but I remember slogging through hours of math lessons daily. Um, and that's not the Charlotte Mason principle because after a certain amount of time, your attention span is going to wane as an adult. So imagine your child's. And so we want short um, lesson plans. And she does outline those at the beginning of each book. But a real quick principle is if you're in book one, um, which is going to be your kindergarten and first grade years, you're going to stick to a 15 minute lesson with five minutes of mental math. Now you can do your mental math at the end. You can do it later in the day, however you want to do it. But every year you want to make sure you're including mental math. Sometimes I do that with my kids out loud. Sometimes I give them um, a program on the computer to do, which probably isn't the Charlotte Mason way, but it does help me with multiple children to get through that mental math practice. And she talks about that in each book and gives you a clear outline. So for book one, you're gonna do about 15 minutes a day plus five minutes of mental math. Book two and three, you're gonna do about 20 minutes a day plus a five minute review. And again, those don't have to be at the same time. Book four and five, you're gonna do about 30 minutes a day. Now book five gets a little bit different because there's a geometry section that I'll share about in a minute. But you're gonna keep those short. So at no point in time in elementary school are we going over 35 minutes a day in math. We're trying to keep them interested, keep them focused. It's not about delight-centered learning, it's about focused learning. Because if I know I only have so much time to complete a lesson, I'm going to attend faster. Kind of like when I'm cleaning and I know I only have 15 minutes to clean, I'm gonna focus on the things that are most important first and I'm not gonna dilly-dally and my brain isn't gonna be as scattered. And same goes for all of our lessons and that's just a basic Charlotte Mason principle and acted out in your math lessons. The other thing about this particular curriculum is that it is teacher-led. You are working towards independence for your child, but it is teacher-led. And that was the one problem I had with my third born. We were having some relationship issues. Um, and while the math was working fine for her, the relationship was suffering. And so I needed to give her one that was hands-off. My other kids thrive on this. They love that there's a guaranteed 20 minutes a day that I'm going to sit down and do math with them. Um, and they absolutely love that it's teacher-led. Um, there are sometimes there are um, add-ons that you can get that if you need to walk away so like um, their little flashcards I should have grabbed those but I didn't um, and they have about six problems on them I usually have them grab two or three and if I have to walk away to change a diaper or whatever they can do those on there but for the most part it is teacher-led so you have the short lessons it's teacher-led and then I'm looking at my notes here um, the other part is that in the first few years it is fo fo focused mostly on a oral concept because when you think about in those early years of learning, you are not only when you look at a math book, are you learning then to read? That's hard. That's already a struggle for some. Then you have to learn to write the answer. Well, handwriting is another component. And then you have to do the math work too. So that's three components. And so in the beginning, we wanna do primarily oral lessons where they are speaking to us because it allows them to focus on the math concepts and not worry about reading it or trying to write it down. And so I do appreciate that approach. It takes longer um, and because of my time rather than just handing them a worksheet. But I not only then know where they are in the lesson and how they are doing with it, but it is allowing them to have that focus time where they're focused on the math and not the other things. All right, the other thing about a Charlotte Mason math is that you are gonna use concrete objects. Now, eventually they will graduate to where they are not using concrete objects. But um, in the beginning, we're gonna use concrete objects. And I always learn these as called manipulatives. It's something that they're going to use to count with. Now, Charlotte Mason says just use whatever you have around the house. It can be buttons, beans, whatever you want. Um, I actually happen to have a lot of little counters left over when I was talking that my kids think are special and fun, so they use those. But you could uh, simply just grab a paint jar and we're gonna have a paintbrush jar and we're gonna say, okay, I've got four paintbrushes and I've got two. How many paintbrushes do I have? And my child's gonna add them together. Um, take them away, same thing. And that is a wonderful way to solidify those kind of cerebral concepts in your mind because what is four, what is two? 
we need to visualize it first. Snack is also a great way. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I'm a big proponent of snack math. <laughs> I do that with all of my kids under age five and uh, older as well, but especially under age five because they learn basic counting skills and math skills through their food, which they're already gonna have. The other thing about concrete objects is you want to have some money. If you can use real money, that would be great but that's not always feasible. <laughs> um, ours tends to wander off around VBS Finney war time where they're collecting money for missionaries. Um, and so sometimes you might need to get the little toy money. They do have some, especially for the dollars. I appreciate the play dollars from Simply Charlotte Mason. But I have found that the using real money is not only a great way to have a concrete object to count, but it is also a great way to um, work on place value. And this was like phenomenal for my second born who used this curriculum to really understand place value with multiplication and dividing and money was kind of her avenue of understanding that um the last thing i wanted to talk about is pacing to match the child that is if you can use these curriculums as i said as is use it however you need for your child now one thing that i want to talk about is like my let's see here i have a second grader no she's a fourth grader I'm sorry, she's a fourth grader and she is in book three. So she'll be going into fourth grade and as you can see, she's about halfway through book three. Um, certain times she rockets through lessons, other times it takes longer and that's okay. So she's on book three. My seventh grader who is using this curriculum, we had some issues, but she is like really doing well now. So she is almost done with book four and we'll be using book five for this time. So I know that that's probably not very advanced in other, um, as compared to others, because there are others who are using this for fifth graders. But my seventh grader is using it this year and she is super excited because it also has a practical geometry lesson. Now, the reason I put this under pacing is because you can go at your child's pace and help them know. I had some children who were struggling with retention and this curriculum, when we switched over, it helped her to really understand the why and how math works. And because of that, we were able to make some progress in it. And also, I just a caveat that this curriculum, I compared to Rod and Staff, and their book four was equivalent to the sixth grade book. There was like one component in here that was not in the, or that was in the sixth grade math that was not in here. But otherwise, this compared to Rod and Staff sixth grade math. So it starts out really gentle, but you start jumping by leaps and bounds because they have a clear, clear understanding and a confidence to go forward with those different concepts. So the other thing, like I'm saying, is you can take as long or as little as you need. So um, let's go here. This is a review of the time, sevens times table and previous tables. And so you can see there's about 20, um, okay, this one I guess has 18, no, it has 20, 20 problems. And if they really know their times table and they're focused and attentive, we're gonna go through all 20 in 15 minutes, easy breezy. Um, this one you should actually be doing 20 minutes, but she's gonna go through this really quick. If she's not, if we're having an off day, if seven's table isn't quite as solid in their mind as I would like, it may take two classes times to do this, or we may do half, um, one day because we're really struggling the next day we're on fire so we finish that and so then we go on to the next one which is why i said i don't really follow the um schedule at the very beginning because i just go at my child's pace and encourage them not to dawdle um i really don't have a problem with my kids dawdling because i'm sitting right there with them doing it with them and so the natural consequences you just then have to do it later um usually but for my kids it's just you don't get to move on and they they understand that and you know, they are eager to finish um another thing that we love about these books that i forgot to mention so number seven i guess is that there's a recipe at the end so after they do all their finals and things like that um they have a recipe so like this one ends in measures and weights and i forget what do you make at the end of this one i think it's yes it's an apple cake um, so you make an apple cake at the end of it. And so that's really fun. Another great component of this is that you have extra mental arithmetic at the back. So when you have that mental arithmetic, you can just flip back here and do these problems. Um, these are also really great just for if you see them struggling to retain a specific thing. So maybe they're really struggling with adding vibes or whatever it is. You can go to the back and find extra problems in that particular section. Um, and you can do it that way. 
and then book five is where we're going this year so I can't give you too much because we haven't done it yet but book five gets a little bit harder and book five is unique in that you're gonna be doing this three days or four days a week and then if you choose you can do practical geometry one day a week. we'll be doing practical geometry and this book goes through solids and surfaces lines study of geometry measurement of line segments then you're going to do circles angles parallels perpendiculars and triangles and can i just show you so this is by dr julie ryle and tabitha Verges, and this one is much more um that it's much more detailed ge geometry than what i thought i would be doing with my fifth grader so um, it is, like I said, this particular curriculum sometimes gets a bad rap because it seems very gentle in those first few years. And so people think it's too easy, therefore it's not enough. And so they move on to something else. Well, this particular curriculum starts that way, but because they get that solid foundation as they move on, as they move on, it becomes so much confidence and they can move much faster through concepts that a lot of other curriculums don't ever cover or don't cover in quite as much detail. And so I highly recommend it. Um, those were some of my different reasons that I love it is that they're short lessons, they're teacher led, you're gonna do this orally and you have that component for those early years. You have concrete objects that you're using as needed at the beginning, money to help reinforce place value, and then that you can make the pacing match your child and they provide that extra work at the end to help you as the educator. So there are so many great things about this curriculum. If you have any questions, let me know. If I missed something, please let me know. And like I said, reach out to Simply Charlotte Mason or Rochelle. They are very great at getting back to you and helping you because they wanna see you succeed. Even when I'm using the other math curriculum for my oldest and third born, I use a lot of the Charlotte Mason principles that I learned using this curriculum because it just works. So I highly recommend you check it out. Go to their website. You can download samples of the book and all kinds of wonderful things. All right, thank you so much for watching and have a blessed day. Let us go forth and strive to serve our families and the Lord wholeheartedly.